Hi, everyone. I'm Sharon, part of the team here at Zello. I am so happy to see all of you for our last remote roundtable this school year. Today, we are talking all about plans. The end of the school year is drawing near, and today we're focusing on the strategies needed to implement four-year plans that really connect academics to the students' post-secondary goals. So we're going to dive into the benefits of Zello four-year plans, both for students and educators, and we're really going to help you connect the dots between high school academics, pathways, certifications, and post-secondary goals, and, and how it all works together for the student. So we have some expert panelists with us here today. And they're going to help um, talk about how they can help students discover multiple pathways to success by building really powerful plans with meaningful course selections. So you're going to hear practical strategies to help students complete those plans and stay on track. I honestly feel like I just said plans about 17 times, and we're going to say that word a whole bunch more throughout today's webinar. Um, finally, we're also joined by one of our success managers and product experts, Tyler Brown. Some of you on the line might know him. Um, Tyler's going to be talking to everyone about Zello's tools, in addition to Course Planner, that support the academic planning process holistically. So before we dive in, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the roundtable format. So I wanna reiterate that today's webinar is not a training event. However, we do have a lot of complimentary trainings, both live and recorded, available to Zello clients. And you can check those out on our Zello Support Center at help.zello.world to see any uh, upcoming sessions. I also wanted to take a minute and just talk about who we are here at Zello. Um, uh, sorry, before I move on, I should also say this is being recorded and you will get a recording sent to you by email tomorrow. Um, and we really wanna encourage everyone to participate. So there is a bottom at the bottom of your, a button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, Q&A. You can pop a question in there at any time during today's webinar and our team is keeping an eye out for those. Um, so who are we here at Zello? Well, our company was started in 1997, and really since then, we've been helping districts all across North America become college, career, and future ready. We truly come from humble beginnings. Three people started our organization, and now there are over 150 of us supporting you and your students and your colleagues and families, really from coast to coast. We support thousands of districts and millions of students, and our program is really used to help students regardless of background ability or pathway to build personalized plans, what we're talking about today, to help them reach their full academic potential and achieve future success. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our panelists. Uh, Ken Enslow, he is the CCMR coordinator for Carrollton Farmers Branch in Texas, and Ashley Knudsen, she is the Career and Technical Education Director at Midway ISD in Texas. So let me turn it over to Ken. He's going to do a much better job than I could of introducing himself. Ken, over to you. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Sharon. Um, yeah, I have been a, a teacher, coach, uh, counselor, uh, district minister, kind of all, all the roles you can think of. Um, and so just um, really excited to be able to, to share and, you know, to connect the importance. We are very fortunate in my district to have a CCMR department. It's a standalone um, entity to be able to support all the wonderful things that AVID, counseling, CTE, and all those other departments do. Thank you so much, Ken. And over to you, Ashley. Hi, thank you so much, Sharon. My name is Ashley Knutson. As she mentioned, I work at Midway ISD in Waco, Texas. We're centrally located in the state. We are a 6A high school. Uh, we serve about 2,600 students at our high school, and we have a uh, middle school campus with 1,300 students. Most of my work is with teachers and students at both of those campuses, uh, working with our CTE programs specifically, but I also work very closely with our counselors at the secondary level, um, and we work a lot with Zello uh, in that process. We have an eighth grade class called Panther Pathways that is our locally developed course where we utilize Zello most heavily. We'll be talking about that a lot today. Um, 
my work with CTE does fall under the bigger uh, college and career readiness umbrella. And so I work um, with those efforts in our district as well. And we have a K-12 focus and utilize um, Zello across all of those grade levels and really looking forward to um, sharing some ideas, uh, some lessons learned today and hope that you can walk away feeling really great about um, any questions you might have. Thank you so much, Ashley. Well, we're very lucky to have Ken and Ashley with us here. And once again, we're also joined by Tyler, one of our success managers here at Zello. And Tyler's gonna be talking to us about Zello's tools in addition to Course Planner that helps students and educators with the planning process. Before I dive into questions, I wanna set the stage a little bit. So today we're talking about the career development journey. And Zello 6 to 12 is designed for students in middle and high school. It helps students of all, like we said before, background, ability, and aspiration become future ready. And it does this a few different ways through self-knowledge, exploration, and also planning. And the planning part of that journey is crucial. Why? Well, every student has a different idea of what their future will look like if they can envision it at all. Let's be honest. It isn't easy as an adult to figure out what our life will look like in three years, let alone 10 years. And that's essentially what we're asking our students to do is, is to picture it and make a plan for it. So after Zello sort of facilitates all of the self-knowledge and reflection and exploration, having the opportunity to set goals and build a plan is really that first step in helping students begin to put their ideas into action. And that's what Zello was built for. So with that, we're gonna turn it over to our panelists and we're gonna start with Ken. So Ken, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your college and career readiness program. How did you get started with four-year planning? And, and while he's getting ready to answer that question, I'll just say that Ken and Ashley have both provided us with a helpful timeline for all of us who like a good visual aid. So I'll throw that up on the screen and we can follow along with Ken. Thank you. Um, yeah, my district, Carrollton Farmers Branch ISD, serves all or parts of six cities in North Texas, um, right at 25,000 students from pre-K pre through 12. We have four high schools and one early college high school. Um, we have a diverse population. Um, we have students born in 116 countries and speaking 52 different languages at home. And we're about 65% uh, economically disadvantaged. So um, when we look at our college career and military readiness program, um, there's a lot of perspectives um, that have to be considered. When we look at the, the information that we're providing um, to our families, to our students, and um, what their definition of success, um, post-secondary success is. And so uh, just like everyone else joining from Texas, four-year planning is mandated. Um, as a personal graduation plan and House Bill 5, uh, it was expanded what our process is to what it is today. For our four-year planning process, I work really closely with our school counseling and AVID coordinator and our assistant director of student information. And my role is, is information and support. I'm the district contact for Zello, so I work with the team on improving implementation, providing platform support both for staff and students. And then my team provides PGP information directly to students through lessons and events, the review course options, our programs of study, and connecting those course plans to a post-secondary plan or option. So that timeline that's on the screen, that is the experience that our eighth graders would, uh, would go through their eighth grade year. We start in September with those Zello lessons and we supplement with our district specific information leading through and connecting um, the Zello lessons with the exploration leading up to the high school visits after they choose their program of study and uh, connecting to course verification at the end as they, they review their transition to high school. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, we did a CTE realignment. So Zello is super helpful for us because our students aren't necessarily going to attend a traditional geographic feeder pattern. And so getting that information to our students and helping them understand is, is really critical with that planning piece for our, for our kids. Thank you so much, Ken. Well, Ashley, the same question for you. I'm hoping you can tell us a little bit about your college and career readiness program. Again, you know, how did you get started with four-year planning? 
So I um, actually came into my current position uh, about 12 years ago when it really just focused on career and technical education specifically um, and not, not where that fell into a bigger picture. Um, at that time in Texas, we were hand coding student, um, really what they anticipated that they were going to complete as a program of study or a course sequence in high school. And we hand coded students based on their um, plans for what they wanted to complete by graduation. And our counseling department, although they did their best to try to have those conversations with students, it was just very messy and incomplete for many of our students. And that is when I first learned about um, the current platform, Zello, what, what formerly was Career Cruising. And so I've uh, been a part of this family for um, about 10 years, if, I, if my calculations are correct. And it all was born from a need for good, clean, solid, complete for your plans. Um, as Ken mentioned, the state of Texas a handful of years ago with a House Bill 5 um, adoption of our legislator, uh, legislatures, um, they required four-year planning, which made um, all of this worthwhile, but we were doing that work long before um, out of organic need. And I think that that helped build um, purpose and intent with our counselors. And that is where my biggest sell was. And that is where our strongest relationships are now and what makes this work. I work so closely with our middle school and high school counselors. Um, one of our lead counselors at our high school is currently also our PEAMS specialist, which is our student data management system. So when I, when I work with the counselors, um, not only for academic advisement and for your planning purposes, but behind the scenes, to build the programs of study and to build new courses and things. Uh, she's building them alongside in our student information system. I'm then building them in Zello so that we are working side by side through everything. And that is just so vital. That, that is backend system logistics that are um, imperative for success here. And then on the front end, we're able to have the, the uh, interaction with students on our academic advisement. Uh, the timeline that you see here uh, really is what we use most richly with our eighth graders in that Panther Pathways class I mentioned um, uh, just a few minutes ago. We, that, that class was born from a need on um, making sure that we met every student having a four-year plan by the time they entered high school. Um, so our district was very supportive. Our school board was supportive to, to vote in that local requirement. Our eighth graders spend all year long in the class and much of the coursework is outlined through our work and lessons in Zello and our four-year planning. We do supplement with a midway academic planner. It's mentioned there on the timeline, our map. We create that document. It's not a course catalog. It is more of a, it takes all of our endorsements, our graduation pathways, programs of study and outlines it in a sort of choose your own adventure <laughs> Um, format so that students and parents who don't understand all of the graduation requirement lingo can start to finish, look and see how do I pick courses, how do I meet our graduation requirements, where are my interests, what are other courses that are aligned to that. Um, but ahead of all of that, it only works because of the work we do in eighth grade with career interest inventories, skill inventories, um, the lessons through Zello that are outlined on this timeline help to build that foundation so that as students then transition to high school, um, through our academic advisement meetings, we're able to, to build off of that foundation and, and continue that work, especially as their interests change. I will say, and, and I may talk about this later as well, if it fits better in, in, in another question, but I think one of the things that our district does well that we've worked to preserve with the support of administration is the need for one-on-one -on -one academic advisement with every eighth, ninth, 10th, and 11th grader. So we begin, as you can see here, uh, with academic advisement in October with our 11th graders. Um, our counselors at the high school meet with every one of those students one on one, and we continue that um, 10th grade, 9th grade, and then 8th grade, we finish up in, in January, February. And that, I believe, is what is so important in preserving the integrity of four-year planning, but also expressing to others the importance um, of why we need to do it and why it's of value to students. Thank you, Ashley. You know, I can I can say that that is something we've heard from other panelists in our roundtable series that one to one approach um, where possible can be really effective. Um, OK, so we're going to jump into our next question. Ashley, we'll actually start with you on this one. 
What tools do you use, Zello or otherwise, to help students make meaningful course selections? Well, I, I mentioned our Midway Academic Planner. That is really our most used tool. Um, we sure we have students go out and we find free interest inventories, um, career inventories, skill inventories, and, and things like that online um, that complement what they already use in Zello. But really, uh, what, what we, we use heavily is our Midway Academic Planner, and I am happy to send that um, to share if anyone would like uh, a copy of that. We don't do things perfectly. Um, oh, good, you already have one. Uh, that's great. Um, we don't do things perfectly, and I update that every year. Um, but I do think uh, we have fine-tuned it enough that it, that it really uh, is parent-friendly for them to understand. It is student-friendly to use. Uh, eighth grade through 11th grade, they use it during their academic planning. I um, update that and create components within that academic planner with, uh, in conjunction with our counselors so that we ensure everything related, even updates that come down from the state, everything related to our requirements are embedded there. But it also complements, um, in Texas, our education agency crafted statewide programs of study that are aligned to our labor market data and needs across the state. And so those programs of study are tracked specifically related to our Perkins expenses and, and per, Perkins spend, spending. Um, so my Midway Academic Planner highlights that as well. Uh, students can graduate without meeting one of those programs of study, but um, if we're all using the same language and working toward the same um, end goals, then our students win, our accountability wins, our counselors win, our parents win, our labor market wins. And so um, it's really the partnership with our Zello information and our Midway Academic Planner that um, help to complete uh, our resources that we use with students. I love that. Win, 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 win. <laughs> And again, you know, the whole topic today is about planning and even to set the stage for planning, you have to have a plan, right? A pre-plan. And it sounds like that's what that map is for you. So that's fantastic. Um, Ken, over to you. Same question. What tools do you use Zello or otherwise to help students make meaningful course selections? We have similar items to what Ashley described. Our uh, student information department creates an educational planning guide that um, has everything from grad plan to course descriptions and things like that that are accessible uh, both at the middle school and the high school level. Our uh, CCMR department maintains a CCMR guide and a CCMR YouTube channel where um, you know there's silly videos of me talking about Zello early on from our implementation um, in front of a green screen just to try to you know build our implementation. Our CTE department has CTE guides along with what Ashley was um, discussing to show our specific uh, course sequence within the programs of study um, that we offer and, and where those are located at our, at our campuses. Within Zello, the messaging feature is helpful. Uh, we had one of our, like our cosmetology program, for example, uh, wanted to reach out because there's uh, something that, that the students have to sign as part of registration for that. And so going in and being able to, to message those students or just pull down that roster and connect it to their district email addresses is super helpful. Um, in that early stages as you're getting um, registrations in and making sure that that's what students want, you know, that's the program that they um, truly intended to, to sign up for and things like that um, is something we look at. We also look at uh, goals and plans. We include a goals and plans lesson using that Zello feature in each grade level starting the sixth grade and ask students to connect as one of their early activities to connect that career in their goals and plans to the program of study or the courses they're picking. Um, as we you know, make sure that, that what they're picking isn't just something random and it's truly um, connected to what they want. Thank you so much, Ken. So everyone, you heard it here. Ken Enslow is a YouTube, YouTube star. <laughs> He's done some videos. No? Okay. Well, you can still find him on YouTube. Um, okay. So at this point, I'm actually going to hand it over to Tyler. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Tyler's going to take over. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, the tools that Zello has to help uh, educators and students with planning. Over to you, Tyler. Thanks, Sharon. So I hope everyone can see my screen OK. Um, so uh, I've been blessed here during my time at Zello to work in a number of different roles, which has allowed me to really see this academic planning process from a number of different perspectives. Um, 
So I've been working in our client solutions team as a support agent, working with students and um, parents and teachers, making those changes to plans and helping them through issues. I've worked as an onboarding manager with uh, great um, colleagues like Ashley to help build out the course planner um, for their district. Um, and now I've also been able to work uh, as a success manager here, helping administrators, uh, principals, uh, district administrators with reporting and pulling metrics out of the system. So I feel really blessed to see it from all those different lenses. Um, and today, as Sharon was saying, what I wanna do is draw on that knowledge to show you some tools at each level of that process um, that can help students as well as yourselves as educators with this process. Um, so here and starting on the student side, since they're really the crux, the start point for any of these initiatives. Um, and I'm not gonna show the course planner today. Instead, what I'm gonna do is show some of those uh, other tools, the great features in our program uh, that can help students kind of build that context around what makes a good academic plan for high school. Um, so for example, we have our assessments, which are kind of the jumping off point for Zello. And these assessments are going to give students the information on really who they are and what their interests are, what their aspirations are. Um, they'll know their personality styles, how they learn information best, what skills they have, um, and even what careers line up with their uh, interests based on our matchmaker assessment. Students from there are able to seamlessly then go into our exploration activities. Uh, so for example, they can go into a career that interests them, look through all the great information that is entailed there, but uh, finishing off with the education information where they can now go into a particular major and learn about what they wanna study or what programs are gonna get them into that dream career. And they can keep going from there now to the different schools that they might wanna attend that are gonna get them to that end goal. Um, and students are able to explore as many of these different options as are suggested to them or that they can find through Zello. Another great activity and tool is our goals and plans area, our new goals and plans area, I should add, which is allowing students to now take all of that exploration, all of that stuff that they've learned about themselves and create a detailed plan starting from that career and then starting to work back through the different pathways, whether that's going into college or university or going into the military or going into a trade school, they're able to detailed lay that out within Zello with smaller tasks and goals that are more short term along the way to help them meet those needs. Once they've got those plans and that context now built out, this can now be used to reverse engineer your course plan. If you've been suggested a certain career or career cluster in the system, you can go in and follow that CTE pathway and that sequence of courses. Um, if you know the entrance requirements for a certain program or university you want to attend, you can now make sure that you're taking the right dual credit, AP or honors classes to make sure that you're getting to that. It's really a way to provide that context an important foundation of information that the students can use to build out the next four or five years of their life. And then also something that Ashley mentioned was our lessons, which even after the students have done their four-year planning can be used to do things such as track progress, um, solicit feedback, provide them with further topics surrounding four-year planning to think about and consider as they're finishing that process so that you guys can start gaining information on the students as well as so they can start learning other key things that are gonna help them build a fantastic four-year plan. That's the student side, but obviously as many of you as educators know in Zello, we have your tools here built out as well. Um, and over my time working with educators, I found that three specific tools are really, really helpful for them to do this four-year planning process with students. So the first one I'm gonna show here is our messaging tool. And this is important because even though you might try your best, small districts, large districts, it can be hard when students outnumber you to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with every single kid. So one thing that you can use to supplement that in situations where you might not be able to get to everybody is through that messaging tool. And this resides on many different sections in Zello, but you're never ever more than a couple clicks away from being able to send that message over to your students. You're able to send that to groups of students as well as singular students. And this is how you can communicate those important things such as new course offerings, different CTE pathways that they might be needing to complete, uh, issues that you found after looking over their course plan independently. Uh, and also mainly it's just opening that dialogue, that chain of communication with your students that they can then feel comfortable with replying 
and keeping that open with you so that anything that they might be harboring, feelings, questions, concerns, they're able to get that in front of you um, and it's able to, like I said, open that dialogue. Another important piece is our uh, ability to view past grade information. So in Zello, you're never confined to just the information that a student has completed this academic year. Everything they've ever done within the platform is always going to be available to you through their profile view. And now with something new that we've implemented, you can also view grade work from previous campuses or previous grade bands. So if you do need to know what students were starting to conceptualize in elementary school, more importantly, probably looking at things they're doing in the seventh or eighth grade, you're able to quickly pop into Zello and get that information. And this has helped a lot of freshman counselors with the issue of, I don't know anything about these students. I have to have meetings with them. I'm trying to help them build out their future, but I don't really know too much about them. So this is a quick way that you can always go in and get a quick snapshot of what a student's goals, interests, or aspirations are, um, even if it's the first time you've ever been in the same room with them. And finally, another pain point that I hear a lot is our, um, our how to manage different cohorts or different uh, groups of students that you are working with. Um, as you know, you know, as a counselor, you can have a huge alpha range that's got a bunch of different students. Um, or if you're a teacher, you could be teaching many different CPE classes. So something we have in Zello to help make that a little bit easier is our student groups function. Uh, so these uh, groups can be created at the touch of a button. You can manage as many different groups in the system as you want. Uh, so you can set up for every single one of your classes or smaller groups inside your alpha range if you're a counselor. Um, and these can be used now to assign tasks and activities to students in Zello if you need them to complete any assignments or um, work prior to building out their four-year plan. You can also now use this to do messaging on a larger level so you can reach all of your students at the same time. And as I'm going to show here in a few moments, the um, groups can also be used to filter any of the reports that we have in the system so that you're just seeing the data that's relevant to you. You don't have to go through the monotonous task of removing students and, and data points that are not a uh, part of your role. So all of those tools hopefully can make the lives of you know, CTE teachers, counselors um, a lot easier in the platform. And finally, the last thing I wanna take you guys through today is our reporting piece. Um, now, I get a lot of the reporting questions mostly from, like I said, district or campus administrators, but I do think that every educator can benefit from the reports. Um, they provide a lot of really, really great data that can help you um, inform the decisions you're making right now with students and how you're helping them, but also about driving the future of the district, the, the um, direction that your campus wants to go. Um, so as you can see here, when I click this drop down, there are lots of different reports in the program. Um, but just for time's sake, I'm only going to focus on three ones that I've kind of found are most important to the clients I've worked with. Um, and I'm going to start with our specialization completion report. So this report is going to allow you to see all of the different secondary diplomas or CTE pathways that students are offered. Um, and at the touch of a button, you're able to see not only who's working on those officially, but also who's on track and who's not on track. And if you see that a student is not on track, you're also able to drill in to actually see what they're deficient in so that you can help them make that up and get back on track. This report has been used um, for a couple of different reasons. So one for seeing what eighth graders and freshmen are forecasting for um, advanced CTE course, which can help with funding, but also um, I've seen it be used to make sure that students are completing any of those state mandates, like the one in Texas that we were talking about, as well as any district mandates uh, in other states or, or geographic locations. Another report sort of similar uh, to the one we were just looking at is our student course plan summary report. This one um, has the same data on the completion of the secondary diplomas, but it also now brings in any primary graduation requirements. So you can make sure that your students are on track to graduate baseline and that they're gonna get their diploma at the end of their four years. But also a really cool feature of this as well is at the touch of a button, you are able to now load this up to show any secondary requirements, CTE pathways that students might not be officially coded to, but might um, be interested in or their course plan actually shows that they're already on their track to complete them. So for example, here we see with Maggie, where she's coded to complete arts and business courses, uh, tracks and pathways, 
but it actually looks like her plan lines up more with STEM. So this is a great starting point to have now a conversation to either refocus her into the arts or the business pathways or to help her change and officially make sure that she's working on the STEM and that everyone, um, no matter who's looking at her information, it is all aligned in the same spot. And the last report that I will show for today is our student count by courses report. And this report is small but mighty. So it's gonna show every single course that you guys have available and what students are looking to request that for next school year. This can now help with um, forecasting. So now you can see how many sections of a course you need to offer potentially, or even staff planning, how many teachers you need to be able to cover those different sections. Um, and it can also be used to identify what pathways and what courses are most interest to your student body so that you can drive funding and other events and programming decisions into those areas so that students are feeling the most impact from them. Um, my favorite aspect of the course planner is this reporting piece. Uh, as I said earlier, just all that data that you guys can get out of it. Um, so I do really recommend to get in here as soon as your students are planning courses and see all those different metrics that you can pull from the system. As you can always export them into either um, different data options, you can always filter them as I mentioned earlier so that you can take a look at groups um, of students that are relevant to you. And if you ever land in a report on a list view that has a bunch of student names on it, you can always click to send them a message as well. So it all works kind of together in that Zello ecosystem. It's never really a dead end. All those tools are gonna to work together in, synch in synchrony uh, to help you guys um, make this process for yourselves and students a lot more powerful and a lot easier. Um, now I'm just gonna pass it back over to Sharon who has some more um, questions for our guest panelists today. Thank you so much, Tyler. That was excellent. Okay, so we are going to jump right back into our questions. Um, so this time, let me see, I'm gonna start with you, Ken. How do you engage students to complete their plans? Any tips to share? Well, Zello provided flexibility for working with students that our previous platform did not provide. So that in and of itself um, helps engagement. Um, having more of those resources in one place where they can click from, you know, a planning piece to what a college major is to a career and not having to, you know, the, the more times we have kids have to log into more than one thing, the, the more likely we are to lose them. So it is nice. Um, and that has definitely driven engagement with, with that, um, you know, the expansive resource. We also uh, bring in additional staff to support our counselors and working with students to help process information like uh, course recommendations from uh, core teachers, things like that. Um, as far as engagement, I mentioned before, we, we did complete a CTE realignment. And so there was a lot of excitement um, with that and having the name Zello, you know, right there beside our rebranding uh, definitely helped because people wanted the information. Um, and when, you know, we look at that, um, we, uh, I think Ashley mentioned earlier, looking at the, uh, the workforce needs and things like that, being able to, for our kids to see things that are connecting to the information we're providing for when we look, CTE is a mover for a lot of our students, you know, they come to school because they love their CTE programs. And when we look at next year's freshman class, our top requested programs are culinary arts, uh, business management, law, health sciences, and then our early college uh, campus. So just, you know, getting that information to them, making it more accessible, that, that you know, wealth of staff around the kids having those conversations um, ha has been, you know, a big driver for us. Thank you so much, Ken. Um, okay, Ashley, same question for you. How are you guys engaging students over at Midway and, and what tips can you share with us? So I, I mentioned that we're really blessed to have the eighth grade Panther Pathways class where they spend a lot of the, their time over the course of the school year um, exploring their own interest, exploring potential um, college pathways or post-secondary pathways and needs that they'll um, need to consider in order to meet their career goals or the things that they think they're interested in as eighth graders. Um, and then they spend a lot of time exploring what coursework we have to offer at Midway High School. We do have an endorsement fair that kicks off all of our four-year planning where we um, have high school teachers and students that represent each of our, our courses 
Um, mainly elective coursework actually comes over at this point, but we do have some advanced academics and dual credit representatives as well. Uh, but all of our CTE courses, our fine arts courses, our foreign language courses are represented at this endorsement fair. It's set up very much like a job fair or a college fair with uh, everyone gets a booth. They can bring displays and interactive projects or hands-on exper uh, experiences for our eighth graders. And we set up at our middle school cam campus in a gymnasium and we're organized by endorsement, our state graduation um, plan endorsements. And so our courses are grouped with, with similar um, course coursework and the eighth grade students during their Panther Pathways class get to rotate through the endorsement fair. They are challenged with a scavenger hunt guide that they are to learn about courses within each of our endorsements. So even things outside of their interest area or comfort zone. Um, they visit with high school students, they visit with high school teachers, they learn about all of the courses, how they fit into pathways. It really helps to solidify and bring together for them where some of their interests are. Maybe they have two or three areas that they want to explore and all of that is done um, and digested before they kick off that four-year plan. So that really engages them in, hey, I've got some choice when I get to high school. I've got some choices I get to make. Um, I've got room to explore. I don't have to decide today and only stick with that. They learn from each other uh, because they come back and debrief after the, the scavenger hunt at the fair. And then they begin that four-year planning. The key, I think, to the successful four-year planning and keeping their focus is to do it in small chunks. Um, it is very overwhelming. I saw a question um, come across the chat about, do you have them fill out every single cell in for every year? Yes, we do. And the reason I think for your planning is so important and what we try to make sure our students see is that there are so many things you're going to want to do in high school and your mind is going to change. That is normal. Your mind is going to change even each year in high school as you find what you like, find what you don't like. Um, you have to guarantee that there is room to fit in everything that the state requires, and you have to feel confident you still have room to explore what you like. And so the only way to guarantee that is to make sure there's a home for everything and a place for everything to fit. So when we actually have teachers that approach this differently, some of our teachers in our eighth grade class ask the students to think backwards. Where do you want to be at graduation? And then where do we go from there to make sure we have room backwards? Some of them start with fill in all of the requirements first and see where they fit. And then let's go back in and find how to fill the holes. Um, some of them then start from the beginning. Let's get ninth grade year. Fit, we feel good about that. Then let's move on to what would be required the next year so that you ensure your prerequisite courses are met. Some of them go category by category, let's do all of your English first, make sure you get your requirements in, let's do all of your math courses second. So there are a variety of approaches that I think your teachers, your counselors, um, they'll find their comfort zone and what where students respond, but there's it's too overwhelming to approach in one or two or even three days. We have our teachers do this over the course of two to three weeks and they touch and re-engage. They add some things, they, they reflect on it, they see if that feels good, they make the next step, and um, they, they let our students really take their time in it. And I think that's so important. Ashley, thank you. Such a solid approach you guys have. Um, we're actually gonna start with you on this next question. So I wanna ask both of you, what was your biggest lesson learned from your course planner implementation? And while you're getting ready to answer that, I wanna remind everyone on the line with us today, you still have time to enter your question using that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, our team is pulling those questions as you put them in and we'll be posing those directly to our panelists at the end today. So Ashley, um, go ahead, tell us what lessons you've learned. I don't know if I can name just one. And I told you that I've been doing this for about 10 years and every year I learn another lesson. <laughs> so um, I, I would say, I guess a big takeaway is to be flexible and don't think that just because you you get it set in uh, year one that, it, that it's not going to change or throw you for a curveball. Um, I still learn about different ways to set things up in Zello to make the user experience with our students more user friendly and, and to make more sense. So I, I find myself going in on the back end and, and making changes and tweaks and adjustments even now. Um, 
and it can be messy and it can't be done without the, the help of a counselor. So I, I would say biggest lesson is this isn't a single person job. It has to be done in conjunction with uh, your counseling team, with your student information system, uh, specialists, whoever works to, to make sure that that system um, is in line because it, when, when it all is said and done and these students have done so much work to build their four-year plan, it has to be able to speak to your student information system when it gets pushed back into that system for scheduling. And if Zello is using a different language than your student information system, it's not going to work and all of that effort can't be fixed overnight. So um, it, it's just learn from each other, ask other schools, see other examples and keep Tyler on speed dial or whoever your person is because um, it you will have questions and, and just don't be afraid to ask. Thank you, Ashley. Yes, everyone keep Tyler on your speed dial. <laughs> um, okay, Ken, same question for you. You know, what lesson have you learned from your course planner implementation? Well, a lot of what I was thinking is very similar uh, to what Ashley said. You know, I, if my team was sitting here with me, they would tell me I needed to go back and tell myself to take a deep breath and slow down. Um, you know, we wanted to go to from zero to a full sprint on day one. Um, but that initial setup work with your onboarding manager to open in the platform, your first group of students, you really have to give yourself time to review and make sure that your information's there for your pathways, those course connections are there, and then train your people from the district level to the campus level. Um, you know, one of the things I would, I would go back, I learned is by the time the usable information got to the campuses, it was a lot at once and they probably felt like they were drinking from a fire hose. And so looking, you know, looking back that it, it can be hard in larger districts, but I think I'd focus on including additional staff when possible in that additional setup process. Everyone's busy and, and time is precious, but one specific example I, I thought of a, kind of a missed opportunity was after we had mapped and when we went to toggle on and off, because you know, we have five high school campuses, toggle the courses on or off um, that were offered there, bringing in the campus staff, like the registrars um, that would have seen that, because that ends up being a training piece later. And that could have been an ally building moment. You know, if they saw that small, you know, part as we were building it in where they could go back and, and talk about, um, you know, how this is coming and this is going to be great. Um, and, you know, if I would have you know, with, with the team, got them in a little bit earlier. Um, again, build some of that engagement, the momentum that's kind of going to lead into the next question, but um, to make sure that the implementation um, didn't have, it, you know, not it had a lot of hiccups, but you know what I mean? Anything new requires um, a lot of explanation. Yes. So I'm hearing from both of you, be patient, be flexible, take a deep breath. It's going to take some time to get it right, but it's worth it. Um, and so with the next slide I'm going to show, I'm just going to ask Tyler to come back on and really talk about how to make the launch a success. Thanks, Sharon. So we really went through the whole team and kind of crowdsourced this top five list. And this is all from the feedback that we've got from working with Ken and from working with Ashley and other um, educators like yourselves that are on this call with us today. Um, really finding the things overall that we've seen a pattern when these things are done, this is what makes a successful launch. So the number one thing is really making it a priority. Um, you know, it's always a difficult task. Like Ken says, it does take some time to get everything set up, but committing to it and sticking it through, um, you know, I can promise that when, it, when we get to the end goal, it does really make everyone's lives easier. It is really a powerful tool. So sticking with it, even when other parties are coming up, even when things are getting busy is, is really a key. Um, another thing that kind of helps with the first thing as well is importing those internal champions. Every district needs a Ken, every district needs the Ashley that's gonna work with us and be able to help us facilitate training, help us reach other departments in the district that need to be involved in this process, uh, help us with getting that all that data that we need to make this work for you guys. Um, so having that one or two point people at the district that are gonna be ready and available and, and able to kind of go through all the steps, that's another big key piece. Um, and then we can't forget about the students here at number three, getting that student engagement and that student buy-in to the program is very important. Uh, one thing that I've seen as a big predictor of success is having students log in prior to doing the planning process, not just to allow them to use all the other tools to kind of get that information, like I talked about earlier, to build those plans, but also because the 
biggest derailer of any you know planning day is login issues. And you know this is a really good opportunity to get students in early so you can make sure that they know how to access the program and they're familiar with it so that there's no frustration points that come up when you guys are in that process trying to get everyone scheduled and you're in a time crunch and there's so many students. Um, so that's a big, big key. Um, and then I won't elaborate too much on this because I think Ashley did a good job of talking about it. It's aligning all those internal processes and the data. You hit the nail right on the head. If Zello is speaking a different language than your student information system, that can be disaster. It can ruin all the hard work everyone's doing prior to that point. So making sure that any other vendors you're using, any resources you guys are providing to students and parents is synced up with anything that's appearing in Zello and in your SIS is going to make sure that that process is seamless for you and you're never going to hit one of those panic, hit the help button type of issues. And then finally, um, another thing that we've talked about a lot today, it's optimizing that transition to high school. So there's lots of different ways to do this, um, making sure that you do have a plan for how to engage those eighth grade students um, in that year before they come into high school to make sure you're giving them all the resources and orientation materials they need to be able to start that planning process and feel confident to land on the new campus on that first day of school um, is always um, you know, something that's just going to make everyone's lives easier. Um, if you do have any further questions about any of these um, topics, feel free to throw something in the Q&A, um, and I'm definitely going to be monitoring that, but I'm going to pass it back over to Sharon once again. Uh, we have some more great questions for, for Ken and Ashley to answer for us. Tyler, I thought you were going to say, if anyone has any questions, just call me. <laughs> or do that too. If you got my phone number, you can give me a call. Don't worry. Okay, guys. So, Ken, I'm going to start with you on this one. Um, and I think you were almost jumping ahead here. So, how do you collaborate with other educators and get buy in for any new program initiatives? Yeah, I realized I was getting ahead of myself there, but but yeah, when we when we look at that um, that buy in and building it, and um, we we started uh, Zello right as we were coming into COVID, so you know the new was was scary with everything, but for us, it really comes down to identifying a connection. Um, one place that that is a, is a buy-in area that's a growth area for us is like our AVID program. We had an AVID teacher who who added it to some of the things they were doing as one of their like choice days, and then people started seeing it and, you know, AVID teachers tend to be some of your champions on campus and it grows from there. Um, those additional staff that, you know, we bring in who had used our prior platform their positive feedback carried a lot of weight because they had, you know, they had been part of the old process and then what the new process and how Zello was was helpful and how it was improving the process, you know, um, sometimes carries a lot more weight than, you know, some of us who are just selling it in the moment. And so bringing in those, you know, those trusted, um, those trusted voices to help support that has, has been big. Thank you, Ken. Ashley, same question for you. How are you collaborating in Midway? I think back to when I specifically was working to sell the idea of Zello um, years ago. And I, I looked at my two biggest groups of resistance because they were gonna be the groups that were gonna do the most heavy lifting. I was moving their cheese, so to speak. And the first group was counselors. Um, it seemed very overwhelming. They kind of have a system that they felt worked. And when I was able to show them that I needed a better, stronger product from students um, and what value that brought to students, but also how that aligned with the counselors, their own goals and, and their work with students. I mean, we really were needing the same thing. We wanted students to feel good about the advisement that they receive and the, the direction they're going in high school. Once I had the buy-in from the counselors and the assurance that they would not be expected to, to bite this off and handle it alone, that I would do it side by side with them I would do as much of take as much of the heavy lifting off of them as I could in order to get things set that I would never just leave it to them. Um, they, they, I bought, they bought had their buy-in. I, I got their trust and got them on my side. Then my next sell was technology um, because there was a little bit of hiccup then. Remember, this was about 10 years ago on trying to get um, the, the Zello, which was then career cruising system to communicate with our student information system and uh, there were some oddities that existed there that we had to build some bridges working cooperatively uh, with, with Zello to do. 
And um, I was able to have the counselors help argue the value and importance of this to our technology department um, in language that they said, okay, fine, if this is right for students and it's right for kids and it's going to make systems better, we will do the heavy lifting and, and figure that out. Once I had those two groups convinced that it was worth it, then um, I just worked side, side by side with them and um, we overcame obstacles and barriers together. And fast forward now to where we are, some of those things are, are corrected and fixed and very natural and are so smooth and, and everyone sees the value and the benefit that it, any, any kind of changes or adjustments, they're an easy sell. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, all, we're all still working very closely together. I never vacated that. Um, I help the counselor step by step and I help technology when, when that system is needed. And because we have trust in our team, then it, it works. Thank you so much, Ashley. So turning folks into allies and, and really getting in the trenches with them. I like that approach. Um, so we're actually going to go to our last question right now, and then we're going to move to questions from the audience. I know we don't have much time left. So Ken, I'm going to start with you. What are you guys focused on right now? So with, with end of year, we are looking at the, the wrap up and reporting, um, you know, at our CTE programs are looking at where students are and you know where they're going. It's kind of things that, that Tyler was talking about. Um, I mentioned because we may have students not going to traditional geographic feeders. You know, making sure that parent approval has come through, especially for those eighth graders that that have one of those program of study differences. And then also just reviewing. Um, we are uh, a district that um, has a, a relatively a moderate mobility rate, but any late enrollees that they have a plan and that they have the information they need before we break for summer um, and, and get the, the same, at, at least a level of support that our students who had been here all year received. Okay, Ashley, what are you guys focused on? So um, all of our course selections in Zello transitioned to our student information system back in April. And we have been heavy into master scheduling with all of that data. What I typically spend May and our summer months doing is cleaning up and adjusting within Zello on anything that will help make next year um, even better. So if we have adjusted some programs of study, if we've added new courses, sunsetted courses, if it might make more sense, if we build some pathways or group some things differently, um, this is typically my cleanup and adjustment time. Um, I would say, big picture, um, what I'm focused on right now is trying to figure out how to um, build time or protect some time uh, with our ninth through 11th grade students in high school on spending more time in Zello with lessons and with updating their four-year plans. They do, when they meet with their counselor each year during academic advisement, they update their plans then. But they, I, I want to find a way to um, embed some more natural um, attraction to students engaging with the Zello platform, specifically the four-year planning piece and, and um, letting that be something that's a little bit more organic for them day to day, rather than just once a year. And it's hard in high school because we don't have one course that every student takes the same every year where we can just roll it out all the time in, in these certain courses, like we do that Panther Pathways class. So um, building that uh, approach is, is my big priority, but um, this time of year specifically is adjustment and cleanup and um, redesign in Zello. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, we are going to jump right into questions from the audience. Um, so we've been monitoring the, the chat and taking in your questions. Um, I apologize if we don't get to all of them. So first question is for either Ken or Ashley. Um, Cynthia would like to know, have either of you used the four-year plan to link into the scheduling systems at your schools and what SIS do you use? So we use um, eSchool uh, and um, we have used that during our entire relationship with Career Cruising and now Zello. Um, and it, it does not have a direct link. Um, our systems do communicate daily and so when we have a new student enroll or a student who withdraws, our, our Zello system recognizes that with a, um, a little chat that they have uh, at, at four o'clock each day. I don't know how all that works. Tyler can answer that. Um, and then each year in April, when we take all of those course selections, 
we share them back into our eSchool system. And that is where we begin a lot of the work to craft our master schedule. I did want to say though, that when Tyler was showing some of the student work reports um, in Zello, we do some pre-planning and some pre-forecasting before our um, course selections are transferred over to our SIS. And um, the student count by courses report that Tyler showed helps us do a lot of that pre-planning and pre-forecasting before we actually do what we call our course dump from um, Zello over to our SIS in April. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Ken, did you wanna add something? Well, we similar, you know, we have our API that, that has our student enrollment updated you know, on a nightly basis. We are currently, we uh, use Frontline as our student information system and we are still in the process of, of looking to that, that course dump. So as of right now, no, we don't have the direct um, input, but looking towards uh, that next year. Okay, next question is from Lisa. Do either Ken or Ashley have any suggestions for elaborating on engagement for middle school students when there is no grade assigned to Zello lessons? It's, I mean, that that's a hard, I mean, engagement in general, you know, is something I think we're all battling. We, uh, I, again, am fortunate that um, we are a standalone CCMR department, so we have a weekly uh, advisory lesson that goes out to all grades 6 through 12, um, and so we can tailor that as far as what content they're receiving. We push that directly from our department um, through Canvas to where it can go straight to the teacher, however that campus is using it, where they get that, and that's how we deliver that kind of content, whether it's um, Zello or any of our other CCMR content. That way it's it's kind of plug and play for the teacher and they can they can get the students working on it. Thank you, Ken. Ashley, you want to add? Sure. Um, in our district next year, we are opening a second middle school and, and moving sixth graders who uh, have previously been in an intermediate campus up to a middle school level. So we'll have sixth, seventh and eighth graders in our middle school. We have had a lot of talk about taking what we have completely saturated in the eighth grade Panther Pathways class regarding Zello lessons and spreading those out over 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, we are going to be embedding an advisory period model that happens daily. Ken mentioned advisory period. That's something our middle school campus is elected to, to embed a 25-minute um, advisory uh, period each day. And it's going to have a variety of things, uh, social emotional learning. Um, we're going to do different uh, mental health focus and, and different lessons, time management, things like that. Um, but all of that feeds into what we've created in our district, which is a portrait of a graduate, sort of what does a well-rounded graduate uh, look like when they leave us and how do we help to feed into that. And so many of the Zello lessons are not just related to planning, but to student development in organization skills, learning about themselves, advocacy, how does this all align to how I'm gonna be a better employee when I have a job or a career one day. And all of that fits within our K-12 college and career readiness plan. So we find um, classes that students take where some of these components will fit or support and everyone can benefit from time management. So we're going to be looking at finding a way to embed the Zello lessons across all contents and grade levels in middle school through um, really uh, authentic opportunities to help build these well-rounded students to more identify with our portrait of a graduate goals. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, I'm gonna do a very quick lightning round, 30 seconds each. Ashley, let's start with you. Any final advice or key learnings that we didn't hit on, 30 seconds, go. Oh my goodness, you put me on the spot first. I'm sorry. I would say teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. Don't ever stop communicating, um, over communicate, be transparent with parents, be transparent with teachers and convince everyone how this is going to benefit them, benefit their students and you will have everything that you need. Perfect. Ken, same question, lightning round, 30 seconds. What haven't you said that you want everyone to know? One thing I would say is, you know, Zello is not just another tool for the university bound student. Um, it is something that all of our students can use, whether they're on a, uh, you know, a career, tra an apprentice trajectory, whatever that is. Um, it is not just a tool for that kid that, that wants, you know, a scholarship or a university or whatever. All of our students can benefit from the additional resources and the four year planning tools that are they're provided with this platform. Thank you. Wow, you both did it. Whew. 
Um, okay, so I want to remind everyone that we are here to help. You can get in touch with Client Solutions at help at zello.world. They'll answer your questions or they'll get you to the right person like Tyler. Um, you can also visit the Zello Support Center 24-7 at help.zello.world. And finally, I just want to thank everyone who was with us today. This does conclude our 2021-22 remote roundtable series for this school year. You can check out new content on the Zello blog over the summer and find any free training sessions coming up on our Zello support site that I just mentioned. And if we don't see you at ASCA in July, then we will see you guys in the new school year. Again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Ken and Ashley and Tyler. It was a pleasure having you all participate. Um, you are all fantastic. We hope everyone has a wonderful summer. Thank you so much.